Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're happy, I said, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I welcome you to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will bless every one of us as we have come today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And that the good thing the Lord has given to us as a church, the devil will not take it away from you. And as you listen to the word of God, God will give you the grace to be obedient to what you are hearing in Jesus' name. Because it's not the hearers that are blessed, but the doers of the world. Let's close eyes as we pray. Our Father, we thank you very much for our Bible study tonight. Long time we have not been able to have a privilege like this. And such a great privilege you have given us now. And we know that it's only the devil and his agents that will not like the privilege to continue. We are praying, O oh Lord, that you will help every one of us to appreciate what you have called us into. And to do everything necessary, everything possible, everything in our power, to make sure that your word goes on without any disturbance, without any termination, in the church, in Jesus' name. As we begin a series of marriage and the family today, we pray that your spirit and your grace will come into every family. And you will renew and revive and restore all our families in Jesus' name. That as a result of this series of studies, new things will happen in our lives. New things with the husbands. New things with the wives. New things with our children. And our families will be turned around in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We are in the study of First Peter. Already we have gone through chapters 1 and 2. Now we come to chapter 3. As we look at chapter 3 verses 1 to 7, you will see that it's talking about the wives and about the husbands, about the family. Today we're going to have an overview of all the seven verses. And then by the grace of God, as the Lord will give us chance and privilege and liberty, we'll now go back to those verses again and take them piece by piece and go through a study, a series on the marriage and the family that will totally change and rejuvenate and totally transform our families in Jesus' name. The home and the family, the relationship between the husband and the wife and the parents and the children actually receive appropriate attention in the word of God. But you will see there is a balance of emphasis in the teaching of the scriptures. As the word of God is talking to the husband, so he is talking to the wife, so he is talking to their children. On the one hand, he cancels the extremes of tyranny and aggressive behavior in the family. That's one extreme. There is another extreme extreme that extreme is permissiveness do whatever you want go wherever you go no control no centrality no unity in the family the bible also speaks against that as you come to this series of studies you'll be learning from the word of god what the lord has to say because he is the one that instituted the family that instituted marriage and he knows how your marriage ought to be and how you will enjoy your family in the seven verses we're looking at you'll see that six of the verses are directed to the wife and you will see that one verse is a giving to the husband why is that so is it because the wife is so bad the woman is so bad that god has to give six verses to the wife and then only one verse to the husband because actually maybe the husband doesn't need any instruction not really actually you will see that as it begins uh, the chapter is talking about a righteous wife a believing wife a spiritual wife that has a non-believing husband but then because of the zeal because of the aggressiveness of wanting the husband to be combated immediately instantaneously she needs patience she needs instruction and because of that all these verses are devoted to the wife so that she'll be able to go the right way so that she'll be able to not to bring the husband to the Lord. But as you look at only one verse given to the husband, the verse is loaded. The verse is deep. The verse is full. The verse is really demanding. Even though it is only one verse, it really nails something right there on the block that the husband will know his responsibilities as well. 
The study today is titled Winsome Character and Gracious Conduct in the Family. As you can see on your outline, it's divided into three parts. Number one is the winsome conduct of a Christian wife at home. Number two, the wife's comportment towards the husband. And number three is the wise, Christ-like character of the husband. Let's look at it from number one. The winsome character of a Christian wife at home. Open your Bible and look at the passage as I read to you from 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of their wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Now you will see that the passage begins with a word, likewise. That word, likewise, what does it mean? Why? It's the apostle led by the Spirit of God, inspired by the Spirit of God, starting the chapter, it's right and he says likewise actually it's linking you back to the previous chapter you see the instruction is given to the wife likewise ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands you will see the word subjection there to be in subjection means to submit and as you go back as you go back to chapter 2 he has spoken to the citizens of the country the people that say that they are believers and he says there is one thing that ought to characterize and describe your life in the nation in chapter 2 verse 13 submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the lord's sake whether it be to the king as supreme or to the governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers and for the praise of them that do well he says are you a christian be a good citizen you submit yourself to the government the authorities of the land he says as it is in the government as it is in the country so must it be in the family likewise ye wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as he talks about the country now he talks about the company in which we're working in verse 18 servants be subject to your masters with all fear not only to the good and gentle but also to the forward he said, if there is going to be productivity there, if there is going to be profit there, if there is going to be anything that will bring gain there, you servants that are working in those places, there is something that will centrally describe your action, that will describe the way you are working there, and it is that word submission, be subject to your masters with all fear. That's why when it comes to chapter 3, it says, we've talked about the government submission, we've talked about your company where you are working submission we now come to the family submission it says likewise ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands and then he gives us the reason why he's giving such instruction that if any obey not the world that is if any of your husbands are not born again they are not converted they are not obedient to the word of the gospel if you know what he's saying he's saying that it's possible that the wife is born again the wife has eternal life but the husband is not born again the husband is not a child of god might be coming to church but he's not obedient to the word of god is saying he says wife you may be eager you may be kind of impatient i want my husband to get it now i want my husband to get salvation now it's so very important and then you begin to lash at your husband and to preach at your husband he says no don't do that be in subjection to your husband even if any of them are not obedient to the word of the gospel that attitude of wanting to drive the husband into eternal life and be very very aggressive and be preaching at every opportunity i will not allow the husband to rest the apostle says no that's not the way to do it you will antagonize the man if they do not obey the word what you are to do is to just make the word a kind of practical in your life and be submissive and be in subjection to your own husbands 
then it says in the next part there they also may without the word without your preaching without your nagging without your aggressive behavior without driving him and drawing him without the word be won by the conversation that means the lifestyle the character the conduct of their wives it's telling us then that our character our behavior at home will do a lot more to influence the husband and convict the husband and make the husband want to come to the lord more than our shouting our preaching our aggressive behavior it's saying, it's saying that your attractive life your winsome behavior your love and your faithfulness and your honor and respect for that husband will do a lot more to convince him bring him to the lord more than your shouting on him that's why it says in verse 2 while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear is saying that they should look at your behavior at your character at your conduct and you are very faithful and you are pure and chaste you have nothing to do with other men you are totally committed to this man and this man can trust you and you respect him coupled with fear with honor with reverence with respect and this is what the bible teaches consistently in the world the submission of the wife to the husband in Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. I want you to don't miss the word likewise that begins the passage you are studying. As we are talking about the wife, you must uh, make your mind go back uh, to the government. You will submit to the laws of the nation as unto the Lord. You must go back to your place of work. You will submit to the rules and regulations there as unto the Lord. You come into the family, you submit yourself to the husband as unto the law in verse 23 for the husband is the head of the wife the wife may be jobless and the wife may be any money the husband may be literate and the wife may be well educated the wife may be born again spiritual the husband may be carnal she even then in the family the husband is the head of the wife even as christ is the head of the church and is the savior of the body therefore in verse 24 as the church is subject submissive obedient unto christ so let the wives be to their own husbands in how many things in everything in colossians chapter 3 reading there in verse 18 wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the law and there should be no argument in the family the wife must understand that the very character of the wife a christian wife is submission to the husband and if you are able to submit at home in the country you'll be able to submit to the laws of the land in your place of work it will not be difficult because already it's your character it's your lifestyle it's your behavior you are a submissive personality at home it will not be difficult in your place of work to submit in your place of work when we come to the church it will not be very difficult already that's your character already it is planted in you already your thoughts your mind your life your everything about you you know how to submit the lord has given you the grace at home you are a trained christian woman it should not be difficult in the local church to submit to the leadership of the local church there and then the passage says they be beholding your chaste conversation your chaste character your chaste behavior your purity of life and that goes along with what jesus christ himself said matthew chapter 5 verse 16 let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven uh, some years ago and a, a, a man of god was holding uh, services in a particular church and a woman born again child of god 
she had been she had been coming to the meeting and she enjoyed the meetings very well and the meetings were to go on for for some weeks and then she went uh, to the man preaching there said so these meetings are so wonderful inspiring transforming changing lives but the problem is i tried to get my husband to get interested my husband will not come and the preacher said woman go back home don't talk to your husband about the meeting all that you are hearing in the meeting let it be your character let it be your behavior and wear it like your clothes so that your husband will see the transformation the lord has made in your life don't talk about the meetings to him it was difficult for the woman but she prayed she said lord i've been trying to control this man at home now you give me grace to turn around and be submissive by the scripture i say so the following day she cooked the breakfast very early in the morning and the husband was surprised what came on my wife today because normally she will still be sleeping while the man is going to work when the husband came back her food was ready again she had cleaned the house and rearranged everywhere and she washed herself and made herself clean and presentable before all the time was taking up reading the bible reading the bible her hair will not be you know taken care of her clothes will not be taken care of all things scattered here she changed everything was all right and then when the husband came back it was a different scene then that night when she wanted to go to the meeting she said my husband i need to go to the meeting what do you say about it she had never taken permission from the husband before and so the husband said okay you can go for one week she was doing that at the end of one week one evening she was to go to the meeting she wanted to go to the room to tell the husband that i want to go again what do you say about it and she met the husband dressing up wanting to go out so she said ah, you are going out he said yes i am going to your church today that man that can change you has been speaking i want to go on here what he has been saying that can change you like this and that man went to the meeting and became born again what she had been trying to knock the husband talk to the husband drag the husband pull the husband so he can be born again and was not possible a change of life within one week brought that man into the church and into christ that's why it says likewise ye wives christian wives born again wives be in subjection to your own husbands that if any of them obey not the word of god they also even these disobedient husbands may without the word be warned by the conversation they conduct the character of the wives while they behold your chaste pure faithful conversation coupled with fear reverence and honor and respect we go to point number two the wives comportment towards the husband we're looking at it from verse 3 who's adorning let it not be the outward adorning of plating the air and of wearing of gold and of putting on of apparel and there are people that do not understand verse 3 because they separate it from verse 4 and you will see at the end of verse 3 there is no full stop there is a connection with verse 4 it says but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which in the presence of god is of great price actually the important thing the apostle is being led to talk to the women is that there is inward internal glory and there is outward beauty and the women should spend more time pay more attention to that which is internal more than that which is external and our women can think about it if you give all the time you give to dressing up and taking care of yourself and being presentable and being attractive and taking care of your hair and everything if you had given equal time or greater time to the inner man to the spiritual life to the restoration of the grace of god of the beauty of holiness in your life what spiritual progress would you have made you will need to understand the emphasis on the external a beauty at the time of peter it was very common at that time that people will spend fortune they'll spend a lot of money just for the outward 
beauty and then they will neglect their character their conduct their behavior and inward development normally we should be neat and we should uh, be attractive in a scriptural way but that desire to be attractive and uh, to be clean and to be neat must be controlled and moderated by the scriptures and by the holy spirit as well as by our sanctified saints uh, there must be an appropriate kind of outward expression that will not contradict our professional faith at that time there were people especially women they were extravagant they were very expensive in their spending on dressing and a lot of things the attachment they put on they were extremely worldly we have read in history how many of them will dress and they will spend a lot of money in fact uh, one individual the wife of caligula we are told that what she was wearing at a particular time the pearls and the emeralds and all the other things when they calculated everything it was more than one and a half million dollars it's a half a million in your outline but one and a half million dollars so what the lord is saying through peter here is that you cultivate spiritual beauty inner beauty inward beauty more than physical beauty of course you understand the standard of the word of god for women and of course you know it is not only for women for men and women and girls and boys everyone that profess to know the law in first timothy chapter 2 verse 9 in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel and the lord is telling us that if we're christians there'll be modesty extravagance and the extreme of fashion and worldliness will not concern us then it says with shame facedness and sobriety and there are some women they say they are christians they do not have any sobriety there is no shame facedness they are so loud and they are so lousy and the way they appear in public it's like they do not have any christian comportment any christian teaching any christian doctrine and there are people that say well i don't use earring i don't use a necklace i don't use this and that but even then the cost and the appearance is still as worldly as the others it says not to embroidered air at that time they will have uh, the normal air dew and then they will put in a piece of gold of silver of uh, other things there very very costly things and what the lord is telling us is that we will not the women will not make their air dew like the people of the world and of course our girls our ladies in the church who have not married yet you will practice christian comportment christian dressing even before you get married it says a gold appears of costly array but which become women professing godliness with good words instead of spending all our money on the uh, materials of the things of the world and the worldliness and looking attractive to the people of the world you will spend your money on doing good to other people feeding the hungry helping the people that are helpless in first corinthians chapter 11 1 Corinthians chapter 11 reading from verse 4 every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonoreth his head but every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head for that is even all one as if she was shaven in verse uh, 6 for if the woman be not covered let her also be shown but if it be a shame for a woman to be shown or shaven let her be covered there are people there are women here that say that they are born again and they say they don't use jewelry they will cut their hair and have the hair cut like that of a man and sometimes you meet them outside and say ah, is this not so and so and uh, with the button down that she even wears like a shirt the only thing is that she is not wearing slacks she is having the hair cut like that of a man it's a shame on such a so-called christian the lord is telling us that if we are christians our dressing will be different in Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 the woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man neither shall a man put on woman's garment for all that do so abomination unto the lord thy god 
there are people when they read that verse they say that verse has been cancelled they say it is old testament all such people are not sincere they are not serious with the word of god because every one of them they obey one part of the verse look at this verse in the middle neither shall a man put on a woman's garment and men don't do that we who are men if anybody came here as a man and then he was wearing up and down or wearing gown and a tying scarf you will say hey, take this uh, man to the uh, prayer warriors if something is not correct in the head all those churches where they allow their women to wear slacks, they don't allow their men to wear up and down. They don't allow the men to wear women's dress. Why do they underline only the middle part and then they cancel the first part of the verse? The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. If we're children of God, the Spirit of God is in us. And the Spirit of God will lead us on being obedient to the Word of God. And then you find the people that have partial obedience. Uh, with their women, they will not exactly wear everything exactly as the man has shown the dress, but there will be similarity. If the man is wearing this uh, abada something, the woman will make her own. There will be a little difference, but it will still be similar. The slacks they are wearing, they say it's not the same. There will still be similarity. If you want to obey the Lord, obey the Lord. Have you found those women that wear cap, even coming to our church here, uh, they say they are Christian since they are born again they are obeying the bible and the calves that the men are wearing they are wearing but we are being told you cultivate inner beauty inward beauty spiritual beauty in proverbs chapter 31 verse 30 favor is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman that fears the lord she shall be praised uh, the lord is telling us that we need to cultivate inner beauty inward beauty of holiness in our lives and when you concentrate on that inner beauty the outward will take care of itself and the word of god is telling us what should be our comportment what should be our character every moment of our lives our salvation is not only for Sunday. Our salvation is not only when we come together for a Bible study like this and we know that other brethren, other children of God will see us. And you find some people in their double standard when they are coming to church, Christian dressing. When they are going to their places of work to their market, it's worldly dressing. And now we cannot even see deeper life Christian wedding and know that this church stands on the word of God. God, you will find the dressing of the people even the people that are not really doing the marriage they just came and then they bring a kind a, a lot of things there then you begin to wonder is this our church is this wedding in this church the dressing of the women even of the men you see worldliness there and sometimes it's during burial and uh, sometimes it's when they have got uh, some new babies in the family if we're Christians, we're Christians every time. Funeral time, wedding time, uh, reception, a uh, naming ceremony. If you're a Christian, you're a Christian all the time. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 26, it says, Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse that, cleanse false, that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. He's telling us we shall concentrate on inward purity, inward cleanliness. Because when we're clean on the inside, then we will dress like Christians on the outside. Uh, have you noticed something in First Peter chapter 3? Reading there in verse 4. Uh, Let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. It's making a comparison. All those things mentioned in verse 3. The gold and the plating of the air and the apparel and all those things used for godliness. They are corruptible. But holiness, righteousness, purity of heart, that which is incorruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, of great price. When you are quiet, when you are submissive, that's of great price in the sight of the Lord. You are approaching a Christian family. 
before you enter you are hearing loud noise and then the husband is talking gently he's saying no sister it should not be like that and these children what i'm saying is that if we do it this way and the woman is shouting and shouting when you get in you are surprised if the woman that ought to be quiet that is shouting look at luke chapter 2 verse 19 but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then we come back to 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. For after this manner in old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Our Christian wives who are here, do we obey our husbands? Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him. Abraham, CEO, I see care. Uh, take him, take him to school. There are women that do not have understanding. They say, uh, this one, this is 50-50. This one, I'm an educated a Christian wife. Therefore, you are James. I will call you James. The best I can do is to call you bro. Uh, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are. As long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. When the, when the submission is there, when the uh, consecration is there, obedience to the word of God is there, honor and respect for the husband is there, there will be no fear, there will be no amazement, there will be fellowship, there will be love in the family and harmony and unity. Uh, as we finish today, by the grace of God, we will go back home, we will be obedient to the word of God in Jesus' name. But be ready for some surprises as you go back home. If you want to give food to your husband and do it respectfully. If you want to call your husband, you call him with respect. It's likely if you have teenage children, they will say, What? Mommy, what did you say? Who are you calling? Because maybe they are not here. Those children don't know that this is the way we should be doing at home. It will surprise them. Now, when everything has changed, your children will see the change. Your neighbors will see the change. The peace of God, the grace of God, the power of God will be moving in your family in Jesus name. Look at it now the third part of our study today the wise Christ like character of the husband in verse 7 likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. Again he says likewise. He says you are not exempted. You have responsibilities and duties to perform in the Christian family. He says, number one, that we will be dwelling with your wife with knowledge. That means there will be consideration. You have knowledge about her frailty. Knowledge about her interest. Knowledge about the kind of word you spoke before, which brought confusion and which brought a sorrow into her heart. You know her. You know that this will not help her. You dwell with her according to knowledge. You know when she's tired, you know when she's weak, you have knowledge of her need, you dwell with them according to knowledge. She will not have to be begging and kneeling down and crawling before you do what is right. You see her making the fire and you see her blowing the fire and uh, the mucus of one uh, nostril will pass to the other. You will have knowledge, ah, this woman needs a new stove. You will go to the market or give her money to go and buy the thing. You are dealing with her according to knowledge. You see that uh, when she is sweeping and all the dust is flying here and there, then she will be breathing at her as if she cannot breathe well. You say, this woman, she has tendency for asthma. You will go and buy things that they use in cleaning the floor. You will buy the machine. You deal with her according to knowledge of her weakness. According to knowledge, you know that she on Saturday, four hours, she is still there washing the clothes of the children, washing the clothes of this one, washing everything. After she finishes, then she'll try to iron them. It takes the whole day. You say, This woman, she needs something. You'll go and buy a washing machine. You are looking at her, you are looking at her need. She will not have to talk. You deal with her according to knowledge. 
you know that when your mother comes in there you know that this woman hey go and take this one go and take this one no i don't want to eat rice now the woman your mother will finish until will wait until they cook everything make all the trouble before ma mama will say no that's not what i want and the woman will go back to the kitchen again then you know that after that you'll find this woman kneeling down privately in the room crying and weeping oh god this life you have brought me to according to knowledge you know the presence of mama is going to cut the life of this woman short deal with her according to knowledge send mama back home then it says giving honor unto the wife it's in our land here we don't know how to honor our wives if you travel overseas even those who are not believers when they want to enter the vehicle like this they will open the door for their wife to enter first when they finish when they get their salary they will come back home and sit down with the wife and say this is your load oh, is I, I was working for you because she is the one that will take care of everything giving or not to the wife not that uh, you know at the back you will be doing something you don't uh, count her as anything she'll be part of your life she will feel honored she'll feel respected she'll be happy that she is the wife of this christian man giving honor to us or to weaker vessel the weaker vessel has been heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered if we want our prayers to be to be answered there'll be unity between us husband and wife if you want the breakthrough you have been talking about all that the lord has been telling us today between husband and wife we will examine our lives we examine everything we're doing and then we will go before the lord you will not report your wife to the lord you report yourself to the lord you will not report your husband to the lord you report yourself to the lord and then as we finish when you get back home you will not underline the ones that they involves your wife and then say you had now today it's good we went to bible study today it's god that brought this bible study to to us now see this one you will not do that the one that concerns you where you didn't do well that's the one you will underline as a wife you will look at your responsibility and kneel down before your husband i know i failed i know i need the grace of god by the grace of God in this family things will change and you husband you, you will say you are not the only guilty one I'm even more guilty than you are look at what I discovered look at what I discovered forgive me I will be a new husband God wants to re renew our lives he wants to reshape on our families and he will do it I said he will do it all these weeks we are going to be having this series while you are coming and you are bringing other people to come be praying oh lord whatever remains in my life whatever remains in my family reveal it to me and let the blood of jesus be cleansing me be washing me be purifying me as i'm hearing so that at the end of this series my family will never be the same again rise up and let us pray we christian wives are submissive are we to our husband a lot of argument in the family a lot of pulling and dragging in the family are we submissive to our husband's at all eh, because he's not born again because he doesn't come to our church because he doesn't put enough money down eh, because he's a jobless poor man whatever poverty he has is your husband honor your husband submit to your husband and give priority to him what purity in what beauty of holiness did you see how sarah respected abraham calling him in a respectful manner is that respect in our families and we who are husbands are we considerate are we dealing with the wife with knowledge do we have the knowledge of their need, of their interests, of their desires, of their aspirations? Do we think well and talk well about them? Are we taking care of our wives? Or are those wives crying every night? Let us go back home and live the Christian life. Let Christ be the center of our family. Let the grace of God reign in our families. Let joy come back to our family. Let happiness come back into our family. Let Christ become the center of our family.